debate over legalizing online gambling is gaining steam as the government faces mounting deficits desperate to bring in extra taxpayer dollars. John Kent, professor at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, is among those leading the charge against legalizing online gambling. Welcome, John. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about the latest developments on this issue in Congress. Well, first of all, it's not just me that's a critic of gambling. Eighty percent of the Congress is a, uh, constitute critics of Internet mm -hmm. gambling. Last week, Chairman Barney Frank of the House Financial Services Committee mm -hmm. held hearings again to try and decriminalize gambling on the Internet. But for the last 10 years, we've had hearings on this. We just passed a new bill in 2006 that strengthens the ban on gambling on the Internet mm -hmm. because of the downside. Mm -hmm. it creates a speculative bubble. And when people are gambling on the Internet, they're not buying cars, refrigerators, and even food and clothing. Well, I'll get to that point again in just a moment. But I want to point out that supporters of lifting this ban on online gambling say that uh, it could bring in billions of dollars in tax revenue, considering that this is a multi-billion dollar industry. Well, first of all, it's illegal. And so my question is, and as indicated by the minority leader on the House mm -hmm. Financial Services Committee, Spencer Baucus, who's complained about a $100 million lobbying campaign striving to get Internet gambling decriminalized, mm -hmm. Where is this $100 million coming from? This is an illegal activity. Who is paying this $100 million mm -hmm. to decriminalize Internet gambling? Going back to your point about how legalizing online gambling would create a speculative bubble, how exactly do you think it would do that? Well, the same people who are largely responsible for the subprime mortgage crisis mm -hmm. on the House Financial Services Committee are, are the ones who are leading the charge on trying to deregulate and uh, uh, gambling on the Internet. It's and because this business model is just not backed there, up. There is no business <laughs> model. People are dumping their money into computers, which then goes offshore to disreputable sources. Mm -hmm. Who knows where this money is going? Mm -hmm. Well, they're saying, well, we can recapture some of this money. But again, if that money is being dumped into computers, it's not going to buy cars, refrigerators. Mm -hmm. It's not going to buy food and clothing. Mm -hmm. Society gets worse. Mm -hmm. And we've had two major reports on this. One was sponsored by U.S. Senator Paul Simon of Illinois. It's called the U.S. National Gambling Impact Study Commission. Mm -hmm. And it called for strengthening the criminalization elements associated with online gambling. And a new report out of the University of Illinois, uh, the United States International Gambling Report, reaffirms this. Just came out in 2009. Well, let me ask you this question. Would legalizing online gambling really attract new people who are not doing it already? Absolutely. Both the Paul Simon Report and the 2009 United States International Gambling Report, which is in bright red, I wore my red mm -hmm. tie to on, in honor of it, uh, reaffirmed that this will happen. This would bring the worst form of gambling, the crack cocaine of gambling, into every living room, to every school desk, and to every work desk. And young people are already showing double the gambling addiction rate of the baby mm -hmm. boomer generation. Mm -hmm. And so this is a huge social problem that is waiting to happen. But I want to talk about what supporters would say if online gambling was actually regulated. They would say that it would ensure licensed operators would use safeguards, such as limiting underage activity with this. What do you say to that? The federal report, the U.S. National Gambling Im Impact Study Commission, mm -hmm. indicated that that is a bogus argument. They said, if you can't prohibit it, you can't regulate it. Mm -hmm. And they called for a total prohibition, and we passed even more enforcement mechanisms on this back in 2006. It's mm -hmm. called the Unlawful um, Internet Gambling Enforcement Act. Uh, and I testified before Congress on this. And by the way, when these lobbyists come and have to testify before Congress under oath, mm -hmm. it's amazing how their numbers change. Mm -hmm. Their estimates go down. Well, there are, uh, certainly this issue uh, could have some more developments in the future, but considering everything else that is on Congress's plate right now with health care and the financial overhaul regulation, uh, who knows if they're going to actually get to this situation or this issue. Oh, it's good. it keeps coming back over and over and over uh -huh. again. This $100 million lobbying campaign mm -hmm. is, uh, that Spencer Baucus mm -hmm. complains about, where is this money coming from? And why are people pushing for this for a speculative bubble? And let me give you one quick example. Okay, quick. The London, London Stock Exchange lost $40 billion in one day when their speculative bubble on uh -huh. Internet gambling burst. Uh -huh. Fortunately, it was illegal in the United States, and our stock market didn't experience it. Okay, that. we're going to keep watching this. So, thanks so much. John Kent, professor at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.